welcome back everybody to a new video. Definitely long awaited. I was a little busy with school, but I'm ready to jump into this video today where we're going to be doing some sentiment analysis on some of the topics and articles that we extracted from the internet in the last video. So to start off, we're only going to need two packages. So if you go to your command line in either whatever IDE you're using, or if you want to just open up the Windows command line, um, you're going to say pip install vader sentiment. And I already have it um, installed. And also you probably should use a virtual environment just to avoid any issues that you might have with um, different updates or different versions of each package. And so you're also going to need pandas, uh, which you might already have installed since it's a pretty common package. Okay, so once you have those both installed, you can now import them into your new Python file. So if you say from Vader sentiment dot Vader sentiment import, and now we're going to import sentiment. Oops, I think this has to be capital sentiment intensity analyzer. Um, and if you work on IDE, you could just auto complete. Um, and then we're going to also import pandas as PD. Okay, and now you're going to want to do df um, equals pd read underscore csv. And this is going to be just reading our csv file that we wrote to in the last video. And so if we actually go to where we're storing some of our csv files, if you right click on one of them and click edit, it will bring open either Notepad or Excel. Um, either one will do. But what I forgot to include in the last video is we want to get some column names just so it's a lot easier to sort and manipulate. So if your file looks like this when you first open it up, which it will be if you didn't make any changes to it, you want to change this to be title, comma, I think it's time period or I'll just leave it as time description and then the last one is going to be URL or source whatever you want to call it and that will be our only edit as well as my working directory is right here so any file that you're going to use you want to make sure that it's in your working directory so that pandas will read it so we could test this out actually by doing trump.csv, which is our file. And then if we run it now, we shouldn't have any errors. Um, but it looks like we just got one, um, a Unicode issue. So in this case, you might want to include um, encoding. And I found this out through you know some debugging on Stack Overflow. And so you're going to want to pass in also encoding equals CP1252. And this might just be because there's some characters in there that are unreadable and are causing some issues. So if we do print df, uh, df.head, you could see that now. Um, you could see our data frame and the title, the source, and in between is the description and the time period. Okay, that's great. So now we're going to call upon the vader sentiment um, analyzer by doing analyzer equals sentiment intensity analyzer and then put open parentheses and we're going to be calling upon that later and we're going to want to start to categorize um, a list now and it's going to assign a value um, throughout every iteration that goes through um, for the various articles that were that we uh, that we scraped, so we're going to want to make a bucket for negative. We're going to want to make one for neutral, and then we're going to want to make one for positive. And now we're going to go through every row item within the data frame that we have. So we're going to do four n in range df dot shape um, zero and so 
this shape right here is just going to get um, the length of the integer, the, the length of the data frame, which will allow us to iterate over every single item that's in there. And so if we say title equals data frame dot I lock n comma two, this will be grabbing the second item, or in this case, the third, because we're going by description um, and we're starting from zero. So zero would be the title, one would be the date, and two is going to be the description. Actually, we could change this. So title is going to be zero and we could keep description. So if we copy and paste that, we could change this to description and we can call that as n2 because we just said that's the second column or the third column and so now we want to just analyze it so we will say title analyzed and to analyze it all we have to say is analyzer dot polarity scores and then pass in that title item and we could do the same right now for description. Oops. So we just have to change the variable name to description underscore analyzed. And we're going to pass in the description now. And now, these right here will have the various scores for any item that we're going over. So say if we want to print out those, we could say print title, analyze, and we'll just do one since title and description will probably be fairly similar. Um, but you could see we're getting all these scores now in kind of a JSON slash dictionary format. So looking at it, you could see right here, the specific one, um, the negative score was giving point two six eight um so that means it has kind of a negative slant but it's also 0.231 positive um pretty high neutral score so this one overall you could say it's a pretty neutral article um however compared to this one where it has you know a zero for the negative score this one might be just more fact-based not so much um opinion based or doesn't use a lot of negative language so we want to put this into our data frame just so now we could start to feed some of this information um, and have it all lined up with our with our articles so we could uh, analyze it in a lot better way. So we're going to do the negative dot append. So we're calling upon that list object that we just made and we're going to say title analyzed and we're going to want to pass in um, NEG for negative. And we're going to want to add. And then from here, say if you wanted to add both the title and the description, um, either or it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do both just so we can get a larger score. So we'll take the average of what the title scores and the description scores, and we'll just combine them both so we could get a better sense. So if we do description analyzed um, and we pass in negative as well and then this whole part right here um, we can just divide this by two because we want to get the average between those two um, negative scores and we could do this right now for the remainder of them so we could do it for neutral make sure you're changing um, both the keys for the dictionary as well as the list and just one more time we'll do it for positive and that is pause fill that in right there and now if we were to run this at the very end now if we were to run negative just for an example you could see that now we're getting a list of all the negative scores. Um, so this is good. However, we want this in the table format that we have. So we're going to want to do 
df so we're calling upon that data frame again and we're going to create a column called negative and it's going to be equal to our negative list and then we're going to want to do the same for neutral and we're also going to want to do it one more time for positive Okay, so now if we run that and we print out our data frame, we are getting this positive column now. However, you can't see the ones in between. Um, and this is just um, an issue with pandas and the way it's set up, but you could change it by just doing um, pd.setOption and then put display.maxColumns and pass in none at the end. And this should curb the issue. Yep, so now you could see it's printing out the full columns. Um, it's a little big, so you could see that it's you know pushing this link to, towards the bottom. Um, you could see here is the description, here's the time, and here is the title. So as this is, um, you know, this is very good. However, if you want to do a little more data analysis, um, you can keep watching and you'll see that we can print out, you know, some of the articles that had the highest negative score or had the highest positive score. And it will help you, you know, pick out some of the most negative or most positive articles on a topic. So if we wanted to do that, let me just comment out this print statement. You can say, for instance, print df dot n largest, pass in five. So we're going to print, you know, top five, um, and we'll put the most positive articles. So if we run this now, you could see that it will print out the top five of the most, you know, positive articles, which in this case, not all of them are going to be entirely positive um, just because there's a lot of negative news out there. However, if you were to put negative, I'm sure you you will get you know some of the most negative um, sentiment articles that are out there. You know, words with chaos in it, talks about violence, um, all that. And you could see that you know these negative scores are some of the highest, 0.3, which is fairly high. Um, since every article is going to be, it's going to have a neutral score just because it's somewhere in the middle. However, this one is, you know, fairly negative and it gives you this column number on the side so you can easily indicate it right here. Um, so if you wanted to kind of get a bulk sense of what it was like on this entire scan, like throughout the times that we collected these articles, you can actually collect a mean of the entire um, time period by just saying print df and put in negative. And then you're also going to want to put at the end um, dot mean and that will be collecting the average of all the negative scores which will kind of indicate you know how negatively sentiment were all the articles um, if they were averaged up and you could do this for all of them so say if you want to do it for neutral as well and for positive And I will say that by taking the average, you might not get a whole representative idea of the sample. And it would be better to just dig deep in here, um, especially because you could see it's fairly balanced, you know, 0 0.079 for negative and 0 0.071 for positive, And then it's mostly neutral. So I will say that using that and largest, you can really find and pick out articles that are kind of the outliers. And I feel like that is going to be the most important part. Um, but thank you for watching this very quick video. Please hit like and stay subscribed because I'm gonna be releasing the last video in this series, which will be on scraping images from the web. So we will try to do Google business since I know a lot of people were bringing that up. 
um, as well as I've done it before on websites like Lightshot where you can download screenshots automatically using the request library. Um, but definitely stay tuned to that. That should be up in a week or so. And that's been it. Thank you again for watching and enjoy the rest of your week.